Hey, Hassan, good to talk to you. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? All right. Uh, I, w I wanted to ask about the offensive lineman you're facing in this camp. Uh, what? Who's impressed you? Who's been hard to handle? Impressed me. Isaac is always impressive going against him. I've been impressed by JP moving in from a tackle and, and moving to guard and how he's been able to respond to that has been impressive to me. I mean, that's a difficult position to change. So oh, yeah. those two. What With JP, have you seen any instance of him, you know, forgetting he's on the right side or anything like that? I mean, is he, is he really technically pretty good at uh, playing guard? JP is JP. <laughs> he's a good player. He's not going to forget how to play football. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, Bo and then Jeff. Uh, hey, Hassan. Um, I'm just curious. You know, you've got a new defensive line coach in Matt Burke. Uh, what do you make of him, and, and how is the, the dynamic in the room different this year than, than it might have been last year? Um, well, I, I feel like he comes in with a different perspective. Um, he's been getting everybody right, um, trying to make sure everybody does what they do best. Um, everybody, uh, yeah. every single one of us uh, uh -huh. plays different. So it's been uh, it's been interesting how he's come at each one of us and tries to use our strength as an advantage. Uh, the room's been good. I mean, we've always had a really good room, but it's, I mean, it's it's a, it's a great great group of guys. I like being around them. Is Jeff and then John McCollin. Uh, Hassan, uh, we didn't get to be around uh, Malik Jackson much last year because of the injury and because he was rehabbing. But, but what does he mean to that that, that room, uh, that defensive line room, and specifically to the defensive tackles and in, 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 in helping to nurture some of the younger guys like you? Well, one thing about Malik, uh, he's he's not afraid to help anybody. I mean, he comes in as an established pass rusher. He knows what he what he can do, and he knows how to help other people do it too. And so, I mean, he, he's always he's always there to help somebody. If you have a question, if you need anything, he, he's right there for us. So he's 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 been great last year and this year. Even when he wasn't playing, he did the same thing. So coming back here, actually being on the field and being able to help us right there as soon as something happens, then waiting to film, it's been it's been a big help, especially me and a lot of the young guys. If I could follow up, how, how does he keep everyone light? Seems like he's got a good sense of humor. That's just his personality. He's a, a good person to be around. He uh, has good, I mean, he's just a positive person. Comes in with good energy. John and then Paul. Hey, Hassan. Uh, kind of piggybacking off that, you, it's not only Malik. You also have Fletcher and Javon Hargrave, even though hasn't been able to practice at this point. When you have proven guys like that who, who've done it in this league, how much of a luxury is that for you and just improving your game? I mean, it's it's a huge help because you see it, you see it done right there. You know how to do it too. And it's also, it's kind of an edge on your shoulder because uh, you got so much great competition in the room. It's a, it's a huge competition in every single spot. So, you know, you have to bring your A game every day. So having people like that in the room right there next to you, I mean, all the positions, DN and D tackle, is uh, it's a it's a huge help that makes you push push yourself every day. We'll go Paul and then Ed Kratz. Yeah, Son, going back to last year, you got off to a really good start. You had two sacks in the first five six games, I believe, before you hurt your ankle. Um, take us through that. I mean, did you not? Were you kind of surprised that you ended up on IR because it didn't really take you that long to? Uh, uh, for the ankle to, to heal, did it? Um, I just did what they what they suggested. I mean, I had to just listen to the doctors and what they said and thought was best, and what they what they thought was best for the team. I I felt I felt pretty good after a certain amount of time, but I mean, you can't you can't go back. He's gonna go forward, so it was just a it was just a weird kind of situation to be in. We'll go Ed and then Chris Murray. Hey Hassan, um, everybody talks about Cox and Jackson and and uh, Hargrave and kind of forget a little bit of you know about Hassan Ridgeway. I mean, uh, how do you feel about that? Do you like being under the radar? And and how has camp gone for you 
um, so far? Um, first, uh, Kemp, Kemp, I feel like he's been good. I mean, like I said, the competition level has been here, and it's been great. So it's every day going out there and competing against a great old lineman and then having great uh, competition right there next to you. So that's been a it's been it's been big and and I kind of feel like uh I don't mind it at all. I try to let my my play speak for me. So if uh, people want to forget, I mean, I just want to show them who I am when I play against them. I mean, I don't want to. I want to go out there and make sure I'm proved that there is no drop off when Fletch comes off the field or when Malik or when when Hargrave like anybody comes off like it's the same thing every single time. You're getting getting a good defensive tackle coming out going against you every play. Hassan, um, is the is the defense kind of a heavy offense at this point? It seemed like you guys, at least what I saw in practice, uh, you seem like you guys are a little bit ahead of, of the offense, and, and and does that bode well for you guys? Um, I feel like that's every year. Every year you come in, I feel like defense usually settles in a little bit sooner than offense. Um, it's just how it usually plays out during camp. I don't think that really means much going into the season because uh, – Usually, when the season starts, everybody catches right back up to where they need to be. So, I mean, it's just that kind of kind of thing about camp that defense usually starts a little bit quicker and just a little bit one step ahead. We'll go Nick and then Chris Franklin. Yeah, hi, Hassan. Um, what what do you say? I mean, it, just touching on some of the stuff that's been asked uh, a little bit earlier. Um, you know, you guys got really got hit hard with injuries last year, and then you went out yourself. Uh, what was the frustration level like for you? How did you really deal with that, seeing not only yourself being out, but, uh, you know, a lot of the other guys um, and, and uh, what it did to the defensive line just in general? Um, it's, it's always frustrating not, uh, not being able to go out there and help, especially when you feel like you can. You never want to just be on the sidelines just watching. Um, it, it's not a good feeling. It never has been. Um, I feel like the defense and how we, how everybody responded with all the injuries going down, the next man stepping up. I mean, you can't really ask for much more than that. I mean, it was the next man up, next man up all season long. So, I mean, that was a, that was, that was just great to see. I mean, really can't say much more than that. We have time for a couple more, so we'll wrap it up here with Chris and then Daniel. Hey, Hassan. Uh, do you feel like you're more comfortable when you're at the nose tackle position or more when you're at the three technique, the three technique in the rotation? Um, I, I feel I like both, honestly. It's, it's not really much of a difference for me. It's, a, it's just a different spot, I feel like. I mean, they do the same thing. I feel comfortable in both. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, Hassan. Uh, you've gotten a lot of time next to Raekwon Williams, uh, one of the undrafted guys. Uh, what have you seen? Uh, what have you seen from him coming in? Uh, you know, as an undrafted guy, and you know, what does he do well uh, in your view? Um, well, one thing about undrafted guys, they always come in hungry, ready to play, ready to work, and that's exactly what he does every day. He comes in ready to go, gets as many reps as he can. He doesn't complain. I mean, trying to learn every single day. He's probably one of the biggest people that's going to benefit from having all the defensive tackles in our room like we do. I mean, you can ask Fletch about this. You can ask Malik. You can ask, ask Jay. You can ask me. I mean, he has so much help. I feel like uh, he's he, he's been he's been absorbing everything that he can and trying to get better every day. I mean, it's it's been it's been good to see and it's it's been shown on the field, honestly. Hey, TJ, how's it going, man? How you doing? Uh, We've heard so much about Davion Taylor and his unique background and, and how he might not be as instinctive because of it. But what have you seen from him in practices so far? How quickly has he picked up what you guys are doing? Yeah, uh, I definitely think he's picked up a lot. Um, and, you know, I was in those shoes last year, so I know how uh, difficult it can be at times. But uh, you definitely just notice his his pure athleticism ability. I mean, you know, a dude can run. He can uh, you know, he can run with the best of them. So I think, um, you know, once he gets more comfortable with the scheme and, you know, it's natural for being a rookie, but once he gets more comfortable with those things, uh, you know, he'll be really, really dangerous. So I'm excited to see kind of how he progresses and uh, keeps going. Very hard worker too. So, um, you know, we expect him to pick it up quick. We'll go John and then Bo. 
Hey, TJ. Um, obviously, very strange off season for everyone, and you're expected to take a, a big leap in this defense, a lot of first-team reps. Uh, even though you didn't have the on-field off season, uh, how much more comfortable did you feel this time because you know the defense, you'd been with Jim, and, and this is year two? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I really think it's night and day, um, you know, coming in last year and, um, you know, kind of going through what these rookies are going through now in terms of not getting, you know, a lot of reps, but having to be locked in mentally. So I think doing that last year and, um, you know, learning from guys like Nigel and uh, Nate, Camus and, and all those guys and seeing them, you know, play the scheme and everything like that really helped me this year. It's it's night and day from how I feel from uh, last year to this year. So I feel really good and uh, really comfortable. So and then Zach. TJ, we saw you make that uh, interception in the end zone uh, yesterday in practice. Can you tell us about that play? And then do you do you sort of take uh, offense at the idea that, you know, you might not be well suited to play against the pass in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, – yeah, that was it was a good play. Uh, me and uh, Suddy talked about it after, and uh, he was telling me he didn't think I could get to that window. So I had to, I had to let him know, make sure that he doesn't throw that one again. But, uh, no, I mean, I it's something I've got my whole life in terms of – not being athletic or anything like that, but, um, you know, I kind of try to prove those things wrong in college. I thought I did a decent job, and now it's, you know, kind of that whole progression over again where I got to prove myself again uh, that I can cover in the past. So, you know, I'm excited. I think, you know, this camp has helped me a lot just in terms of uh, reading um, different kind of patterns and, and those things like that. So I feel I feel really good in the past and the run. So uh, I'm excited to see kind of how things shake out. Thank you. We'll go Zach. Oh, sorry, go ahead. We'll go Zach and then Rube. Hey, TJ, in, in, in Nate Gary's video conference with us, he was asked about you and he called you Terrence. Um, is, <laughs> is, is there any significance to him calling you that? And, and uh, a Nate Gary question, can you kind of explain the role that he plays in the linebackers room this year? Yeah, uh, I did not give him permission on calling me that, but uh, I'm going to have to start calling him Nathan or something like that to kind of get back at him. But uh, no, he's uh, you know he's definitely a leader of our group. You know, a guy uh, that we look in, that we look look to for you know if we have questions or anything like that. Um, you know, just a very very solid mind when it comes to football. I mean, uh, one of those guys who knows just about everything there is to know about defense. So uh, having him in our room and being able to lean on him and just trying to talk to him, seeing what what he sees on the field is something that definitely helps a lot. So um, he's been he's been really good for us, and uh, you know we are gonna have to all progress and, and keep going. Rube and then Daniel. You know, uh, you, you've talked a lot about how being undrafted kind of shaped your the, the hunger and the, and the drive that you have. Yeah. Obviously, financially, being a draft pick is beneficial, but do you ever kind of feel grateful that you were undrafted because, A, you could pick the team that you wanted to go to, and, B, uh, because it kind of, you know, set the stage for that, that mindset that you have? Yeah, I mean, I'd be I'd be lying to you if that's something that I you know still don't think about every once in a while in terms of um, you know, not getting my name called and something I think that that keeps me going. And um, but at the end of the day, I'm I'm very happy with how everything worked out, and I wouldn't change that uh, for the world. Um, so I think you know it definitely helps my hunger and keeps that chip on my shoulder at all times. Um, but it's it was definitely nice being able to at the end of the day, kind of like you said, choose where I wanted to go and. Um, you know, Philly definitely felt like the best fit, and you know, I'm, I'm definitely happy with uh, where I ended up. Daniel and then Martin. Hey, TJ. Uh, the offense hasn't had uh, Miles Sanders for about a week. Boston missed some time, uh, so you saw a lot of the the younger running backs. Uh, what has stood out um, about that group, and has any of those guys kind of uh, surprised you in any way? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Corey just looks he looks great, man, in pass protection. Um, he looks, you know, very, very sound, very, just very solid in everything that he's doing. He looks fast. He looks quick. Um, so he's definitely been impressive. And I would say uh, Elijah uh, Holyfield, someone who just looks hungry at all times. You know, he wants to do everything at full speed, and, and he plays with great technique and great, great strength. So uh, definitely a guy who who sticks out in my mind for sure. We'll go with Martin. Hey, TJ. Um, as an undrafted guy, I mean, last year you obviously benefited from having the uh, four preseason games that probably helped you make the team and everything. I mean, can you a, kind of talk about that and, and be like, you know, what guys who, who this year are in your situation might be missing out on by not having the preseason games and how do you compensate for that? Thanks. 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, last year, definitely, you know, getting those reps in those those live situation games um, is something that's hard to replicate. replicate. Um, so going into those games, you know, you really want to put it all on the line. I definitely think that's something that helped me a lot uh, make the team last year. Um, so I think, you know, going into it uh, for this year, these guys, it, it is definitely different just in terms of we don't have, you know, live live games every, you know, every week or anything like that. But I think, you know, the advice that I give to the guys that I talk to is just making sure that you're making the most out of every rep that you get because um, it might not be a lot. You know, you might be running, you know, scout team stuff, but, you know, they're always being evaluated. So making sure that, you know, you're always doing everything that you can right and making sure that you're using the right technique and, and high effort and, uh, you know, good things will happen. So I think just trying to keep that day-by-day -day mindset is something that I've been talking to those guys about and, um, you know, just, just trying to see where things end up. Do, do you think you would have gotten a similar shake this year, you know, if you were coming in this year as opposed to last year? Yeah, you know, it's it's hard to tell. Um, you know, I don't ever doubt myself, so I'm hoping that, you know, it would have been a similar outcome. Um, but I think, you know, definitely missing those game reps definitely hurts a little bit. But I think, you know, with the way that our practices are set up, coaches have done a great job of just giving us live kind of competition uh, scenarios for guys to get those reps that they need. And then uh, that's how they get evaluated. So it's definitely been uh, a good practice setup for us. Thanks. We'll go to Bo Wolf. Hey, TJ, I've been asking guys, um, of all the weird things that are different this year with coaches wearing masks and the, the contact tracers and stuff, what's the weirdest thing of day-to-day -day life for you? What's the, what's the most different? The weirdest day to day, uh, I think just for me, you know, I'm a guy who I go in the hot tub every single day. Uh, so going in there now, we have like a limit kind of on what, how many guys can be in there. So you'll like before last year, it was just like a group, you know, huddled in the hot tub, everyone standing close just because they want to, you know, get warm before practice. And now it's like you got a, you got a little bit of a line to wait just to, you know, get into the hot tub. So guys have to wait their turn and things like that. And that's when the, that's when it's nice not being a rookie. I know that. So uh, that's definitely been a little different. Guys are allowed in at once. <laughs> what what's the limit? What's the limit? We got four yeah. in the hot tub, so anything past that, and the trainers can see you through the window, so they're coming for you if you're, if there's anything past that. It's fine, thank you. Yeah. Hey, Sean. How are you? Uh, Jim Schwartz uh, keeps uh, telling us, uh, re-emphasizing how difficult it is for rookie safeties and linebackers to uh, really orient in his system and know all the things they're supposed to know and react the right way. And uh, I'd be depressed if I were one of his rookie linebackers or safeties. It seems like, uh, is it that hard? Is it that uh, uh, daunting a task for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you coming from college, uh, there's, there's a lot more detail in the NFL and specifically maybe with this playbook, you know, there's a lot of little things you got to know. You don't just have to know your job. You have to know everybody's job around you. So with that being said, you know, that can cause some, you know, confusion or, you know, maybe you're maybe you're a little bit slow to react on certain things because you're still learning all that. But, you know, most part of it is just learning your playbook, going home, studying, just keep trying to get better every single day and then correct the mistakes you made the previous day. So who's helped you if I can follow up a little bit? Uh, uh, most of the linebackers, the older linebackers helped, you know, Nate, Nate Jerry, TJ Edwards, Duke Riley, uh, Alex Singleton, they all they all are really helpful. Uh, even even older safeties, Jalen Mills and Rodney McLeod, they all help and, you know, try to give me pointers everywhere I can. So it's been real good. Thank you. Ruben and then Kristen. What's up, Sean? Uh, there's been a couple times we've seen you uh, maybe in thud periods, like have a thud plus type hit. Uh, what's the balance for you of, of – you know, wanting to show what you can do, but also kind of, you know, sticking to exactly what the drill is. And, and, and is, is that tough for you to do? Uh, at, at first it was because, you know, coming from Temple, and maybe this is like somewhere else too, but at, from Temple I know that we've always been live and go and full go and just moving fast constantly. So when, when the first couple of plays happened, it was just kind of I'm, I'm still learning my way. You know, the old, head has, old heads have to tell me, you know, you got to relax a little bit, take it a little bit easier. But, you know, I was just trying to play fast, man, and I was just trying to be around the ball and just, you know, I, I was happy to get the pads on the first day. So that's really why it happened. I was just excited. But, you know, it's, it's been all right. Kristen and then Bo. Hey, Sean. Uh, with no preseason, which is especially helpful for, for you as a rookie to get that first taste of the NFL. Doug Peterson says he's been preaching a message of, you know, a heightened sense of urgency right now. I'm curious if any of the veterans have, have passed on any of that same messaging to you and, and your thoughts of what it's going to be like for, for that first taste of the NFL when it comes up. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, the older linebackers in my group, uh, specifically Duke Riley, uh, I talk to him a lot. And uh, even the older safeties, again, like I mentioned before, they oh, they always tell me, man, like, you know, every time something like little details I miss or something like that, like, hey, man, you got to get that corrected because we don't have no preseason game. So that first game, everything, everything counts. You know what I'm saying? You can't miss, you can't miss a little assignment. You can't miss a little detail. You got to get everything on point. So, you know, and, and for me, I, I agree with it completely. I, I'm starting to learn now, like as I'm getting farther into training camp, that everything really does matter. Like, you know, maybe you maybe you misread an assignment on this one. Maybe you missed a little detail that wasn't too big. It's not going to cost you to play, but it's something little that could have helped you in a major way. So, you know, it, it's, it's definitely a lot of sense of urgency uh, around the building and, and in terms of the defense and offense. Oh, and then Jeff. Hey, Sean. Um, you know, on the, you know, the specifics of those details and stuff, you've been working with the, the ones on most of the special teams units. Um, how ready do you feel for, for week one without getting to, to actually do that stuff live? I mean, that's one of the things you are missing from, from preseason. Uh, I'm excited, man. My motto is uh, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So, you know, I, I just I just take it every day by day, man. I just try to get focused better on the details, like I was saying before. And, and, and in terms of special teams, man, I'm just I'm writing everything down. I'm taking notes nonstop. You know, everything the coach is saying, I'm trying to get corrections. I'm trying to get it right. So when the time comes and the game starts, I'm ready to go. But I, I'm more than excited, man. I, I've, you know, even the guys that are with me on the ones, the older veterans, they, they just tell me how exciting and, and the adrenaline rush you get when you're out there. So I'm excited to feel all that, man. I'm just I'm ready to go. And, and how much special teams did you do in college? Did you do a lot? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, man, my freshman year, I played everyone. As a, a true freshman, I played everyone. Sophomore year, I played everyone. Junior year, I played about three. And I senior year, I didn't play any. But I've always did. I did all the special teams drills in practice nonstop. So, you know, I, I like special teams, man. I, it's a big part of the game. It's been emphasized when I was in college. So, thank you. Jeff and then Martin. Uh, Sean, how much of the, uh, you know, how much – of the fact that you see jet motion a lot in the NFL and, and they, offenses do a lot to, to try and get you to move your eyes off where the play is going. How much of that is really is what makes kind of transition to the NFL? I know they do it in college, but because it's moving at a different speed, how much of that is what makes it so difficult for linebackers to make the adjustment to the NFL? Yeah, that's definitely a big part, man. Honestly, you know, you got the, like you said, the jet motions, the orbit motions, the – the, the swaps, the pullers, like, you know, that's all, like, that's same things we see in college, but the tempo and the efficiency of the other players on the other team, the offensive guys that are in the NFL as well, they're good players too. So they're moving 10 times faster, man. So you really got to be on point with everything you're doing. Every movement, everything you're doing has to be, your eyes got to be on point or otherwise you'll miss something. So it's a big emphasis, man. That's probably the most difficult thing is getting your eyes right. Martin and then John McMullen. Hi, Sean. What, what has been the toughest adjustment for you to the NFL, and, and how much do you and Davion, you know, spend talking to each other about, you know, what you guys are seeing, what you guys are experiencing, those kind of things? All right, so for me, I think the, the toughest part would be, you know, the, like I said, the playbook and the details for sure. Um, you know, Temple, it was a, it was, you know, it was, it was a lot of basic things. You had basic coverages, you had basic, you had basic assignments and basic adjustments. But this one, like I said, you have to know everybody. You have to know where everybody's at the D line, the, the safeties, where they're coming down, all that. So, learning all that and trying to think at the same time is, is that's, that's the challenge. Been the challenge for me. And in terms of me and Davion, man, we're we're good friends, man. I, I talk to him about it a lot, man. We just have simple conversations. And, you know, I'm always saying, man, because my thing is I take it day by day. I, I never look into the future. I never, you know what I'm saying, I never worry about, you know, where the cuts is at and where I rank on the depth chart. I just, you know, I get up every day and I'm like, all right, well, I made these mistakes yesterday. Let me better myself today. And then I'm going to be happy with the effort I put out at the end of the day. And that's what it is. So, you know, I, I tell him that and, and we have good conversations, man. So just trying to stay positive. John and then Daniel. Hey, Sean, uh, we got the opportunity to talk to your position coach, uh, Ken Flajol, the other day. And he mentioned Jim was uh, doing a lot of man-to-man -man coverage with the linebackers to kind of see who can cover. Uh, you obviously have the requisite speed and athleticism, but what have you found the most difficult part of NFL offense? It tend to be more complicated, especially in the passing game. 
Yeah, they're, I mean, for me, man, it's just it, they're good players. Like, you got good players on the other side of the ball. Like, you know, sometimes we're matched up in a slot with Zach Ertz or sometimes we're, in, we're out wide with Miles Sanders or you're even in a slot and you maybe you might have Deshaun Jackson. It's just it's they're, they're good players, so the efficiency of your movements has to be on point. Like, you, you, can't, you can't take an extra step. You can't take a false step. You can't look the wrong way. Your eyes got to be on point. It's You need every single second. And to be where you're supposed to be, so I would just say, you know, that that would be the the most the toughest part. But, you know, getting day by day, getting better, just keep pushing. Daniel and then Zach. Hey, Sean. Uh, when we talked to you, uh, I guess late last month, um, you, you talked about kind of breaking the ice uh, with all the rookies when it was just you guys there being vocal. Um, you know, how have you tried to make that transfer over now that the the veterans are here? Um, you know, how do you kind of try to, I guess fit in while still trying to to be yourself and find your own role with that uh man I, I'm, I'm just myself man I, I i act how i act anywhere else you know i um you know the the old heads here have been really good you know there hasn't been no like ignorant type people or, or people that are doing too much they all have been really helpful uh giving me advice you know joking around and so it's, it's a good environment man so I, I couldn't even complain but you know yeah i'm just i'm just being myself sticking to who i am and that's how I carry it, honestly. We have time for a couple more, and we'll get TJ Edwards in here. So let's go Zach, Bob, Groats, and Nick. Hey, Sean, the, the general perception from the outside seems to be that the linebackers are the weakness of the Eagles' defense. Is that something that you guys are aware of or that has ever discussed in the meeting room among each other? Um, I mean, I'm a sort of a sh- – I'm assuming we're aware of it uh, from the media and whatever the things that are posted, but no, nah, we don't take account to any of that. Um, you know, we know what we can, we know what we can do in that room. Um, and, you know, we, we know what we are going to do this year. So, you know, we, I, we have the utmost confidence in each other and um, we're just going to be ready to go and ready to go out there and show what we can do, honestly. Go ahead, Bob. Yeah. Hey, Sean. Um, when you get a little break in, in the action in practice or something. Do, does it ever cross your mind that here you are playing football still and all your guys at Temple are, you know, they they might play in the spring and, and you're going to be the one at the link? And, and and what is that like? I mean, do you kind of drift into that and think how – does it make you grateful or anything? Or um, Yeah, I mean, most definitely. Well, at practice, I'm, <laughs> at practice, I'm pretty sure I'm probably thinking about the next play. I'm probably trying to get the play call, <laughs> you know, learn that. But – I do take time throughout the day, and sometimes I sit and think, man, how crazy this is, and you know, like you know, the whole COVID things going on, and and where Temple is, you know, Temple's right down the street, so I actually went to one of their practices recently, but it's just all crazy, man, and it's crazy how fast things can change and how things have changed in, in within a year, so it's just it's a blessing, and it's also just crazy. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, uh, hi, Sean. Um, the, the blitz game, uh, you probably know this, although you might not because you're a rookie. Jim Schwartz doesn't tend to really like to blitz a lot. He would rather get home with the, with uh, his front four. But uh, there was at least one offensive or, or one, you know, series, I think it was yesterday, where he sent a linebacker on every play. Uh, is this a way of him, get, you know, testing you guys to see what you could do? And if you, uh, if you guys, you young guys, you and Davian and everybody else prove that you can get home, do you think that might change his thinking and, and, uh, you know, how, how do you feel about the Blitz game and how, is it, how exciting is that for you if, if you get a chance? Yeah, most I'm, I'm definitely excited about it. But, you know, Coach Shorts is, is, is a great coach, honestly. The, the detail, the, the way he explains things is unlike no other, to be honest with you. And in terms of the Blitzes, yeah, he, we run them. You know, we got we to gotta continue to practice them and, and continue to build on them so, you know, we can call more in the game and things like that. But – for the most part, you know, I'm excited about it. I, I like I didn't blitz too much in college, so when I hear blitzes, I'm like, oh man, this is it. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go get back there. So, yeah, most definitely excited. Hi, Davion. Uh, Jim Schwartz has talked to us about that uh, linebacker and safety are the toughest positions for young players in his system, and, and it really takes a lot of work and a lot of uh, you know, film and so forth to decipher everything you have to do, everything you have to know. Have you found that to be the case? And uh, how daunting has it been, I guess, for you? Uh, yes, uh, I have found that like, it's very difficult um, 
to learn that position just because, like, uh, I learned, I know the playbook now, and I have confidence, but now it's just all about just paying attention to the details because uh, one little thing can change your gap or one little thing can change what you have in the past coverage. So it's all about just now just uh, paying attention to the details and making sure that, uh, like, uh, like if you have a play call, just go through all the scenarios that what, what you might have uh, on that play down and just making sure that you uh, execute it to the fullest. Let's go, Dave. Hey, Davion, what's your process like for this daunting task of learning linebacker and Schwartz's defense? What are your days like? Uh, what are you doing extra to try to catch up? Um, mostly just like the, the meetings and practice are like what we're doing most of the time. Uh, just because of training camp having mandatory meetings, but during my free time, I, I didn't, uh, started going up there to coach uh, the linebacker coach Coach Flage office and just spending an extra 30 to 45 minutes with him every morning and just asking him questions. Like, I, I, and then at nighttime, I'll watch the film from the day, go over the playbook, and just if I, anything pop up while I'm watching it, just I'll write it down the, uh, in my in my notes and everything. Then in the morning, I'll come in and I'll ask, and I'll be like, all right, why, why do we do this? Or why uh, is the coverage played this way? So I can know the understanding uh, of what are we doing, just not not just, just, playing, just playing the play. Jeff and then Chris Franklin. Uh, Davey, what are you doing on special teams right now? How many of the uh, units are you involved in, and what has generally been your role? Um, I've been playing all special teams, making sure that I'm on all four units, making sure that I'm uh, that I, they, I can see that I can, uh, they can see that I can play all special teams. And uh, when it comes to the role of just special teams, it's uh, just mostly just playing every position because, like, uh, coach. Phil been moving us all around, just trying to see what uh, what we fit the best. So, like, if he moved me around one day, just playing a different position, I make sure, I, like, I know the play and I know all the positions so I won't be up there just, like, looking confused. So, uh, just making sure that whenever my name is called on special teams, like, uh, I'll just, I'll be ready. We'll go Chris and then Daniel. Hey, Davion. Uh, you, Sean, and Dante all starting at the same time right now as rookie linebackers, like, can you describe like how you guys are working together and trying to learn a position, and also are you guys creating this like a certain bond amongst you guys? Uh, yes, we've created a great bond. With the three rookies and uh, we always, when we're on the field, we're always trying to help each other. Like uh, if one one person forget to play, we was like, hey, you have to, you have this gap or you have this. And uh, even when we off the field, like when we're uh, just watching the older guys, we was like, hey, you see what we had here? What was the play call? And just making sure we all just all into paying attention to the details and paying attention to what's going on. And uh, even just outside of just uh, just practice, even the meeting rooms, like we'll ask each other th uh, things just like if we didn't know and then we just wanna, don't want to like ask the question out loud, just like we'll just ask each other. So we just all been leaning on each other and just trying to help each other when it comes to uh, the th all three linebacker positions and making sure that we know everything and that when, when we go out there and like and it's our, our name to be called, we won't be confused or we won't uh, be hesitant. Daniel and then Ed Kratz. Hey, Davion. Uh, coming out of college, a lot was made out of your your physical abilities, you know, your speed, your athleticism. How have you felt? How have you felt that uh, translate uh, to an NFL field through you know these first couple weeks of practice? Um, one thing I realized is the speed, like the speed and athleticism. athleticism uh, it's about the same as mine. Like everybody is fast, everybody is uh, is strong. So like I, now I just have to make sure that I'm paying attention to the details. So uh, now it's just all about it. Ain't, it ain't all about just trying to run to the ball. Or all all about just trying to uh, just go out my way to make a play. It's all about doing my assignment. So like if I have that a gap, stay in that a gap until like uh, like the ball break, then I can go chase the ball. So it's just all about not trying to just go make a play right away like I did in college. Now it's all about just paying attention to my assignment and making sure I'm doing my job right before I go try to out my way and try to go do something else. We have time for a couple more here before Davion has to get to meetings. So we'll go Ed and then Bo Wolf. Hey, Davion. Um, having that unique background, not really getting started in the game until, you know, really community college. Um, have you had a kind of a moment where you've looked around and said, like, wow, you know, I'm in the NFL now, anything like that? I think that's every day, to be honest. Like, every day I just walk, when I walk out there and practice, I'm like, I'm really in the NFL. I'm really playing with these guys. And, uh, and I've been leaning on a lot of these guys as, like, just asking them questions about just the, uh, what I need to do to become a successful player because for me being so late and so raw, like, I know I have a lot of stuff to catch up on. And, like, I've been making sure I'm asking so many questions when it comes to the veteran linebackers or just – uh, just veteran players on the team, just making sure what I uh, what I have to do in order to stay in this league and play for a very long time. And uh, I think that has, has really helped me. We'll wrap it up here with Bo. 
Hey, Davian, I'm just uh, curious if you can tell us a little bit about what like your, your evenings are like uh, as camp is going on. What do you do when, once you leave the facility? Uh, once I leave the facility, when I go home, I usually, uh, for like the first 30 minutes when I go home, I probably just chill, like just get in my mind off football for a minute, probably watch uh, TV, watch an the episode. Then right when I get in bed, I try to make sure that's when I, like, I look at my, uh, the film for an extra hour or so. And uh, like that's when I write my questions down, making sure like I know what I'm doing so for the next day I won't make the same mistake I made the uh, previous day or like that, that, that day. And um, when I do ask the questions, uh, like th during that evening, I'll be like, all right, now I know what I need to ask. Now I need to know what I need to work on for the next day. So that, that's most of my evenings like. Then after that, uh, I watch the film and everything. I try to go to sleep and just, just really just thinking about the plays and everything. So when I go to sleep, maybe I'm dreaming about the playbook or maybe I'm dreaming about like what I, do, I have to do for the next day. And just that's what I do. And it really has helped me too throughout this camp and it's just continue to help me uh, throughout this year, hopefully. Hi, Elijah. Uh it looks like things have been going really well for you in this camp. Uh, what do you see your role uh, on this team uh, going forward? Uh, you know, they have obviously Miles Sanders and Boston Scott. Uh, what do you see yourself doing if you're the third guy? Um, you know, just really whatever the coaches, you know, want to put me in the position to do. Uh, I've been trying hard, you know, to hone my skills at everything so I can I can do whatever they need me to do. So right now, just working and not really worrying about that. We'll go Ruben, then Daniel. Elijah, how much of an advantage was it for you looking back now that you got in at the end of last season, you got to feel you're in the building, you had that first taste of, of the offense for, for a week? Uh, before the Seattle game, and, and just having that going through the off season, uh, how far ahead do you think you are because of that experience? Yeah, I think it helped a lot. Uh, I think it was a real big deal. Just getting to know the coaches, getting to know Deuce a little bit more, um, getting the, like getting a little bit of grasp of the offense, and then getting to go back and go over it again. I think it's helped a lot. So it's just, it's almost like I learned so much that one week I was here. Uh, so you know, coming back, it was a, it was a big jump start. So Daniel and then Ed. Elijah, uh, TJ Edwards just described you as someone who looks hungry uh, at all times. Um, what has this camp been like for you, you know, coming in after being on a practice squad um, all last season, having a weirder off season, and now finally getting on the field uh, and having the chance to kind of show what you do? What, what's that been like? Uh, it's been great just getting, uh, you know, being on practice squad. A lot of times, you know, it's like you're getting, getting evaluated sometimes and doing a lot of work and nobody's really watching. So, you know, just the chance to get back out here, get to play and uh, have an opportunity has been just been great for me. So I love playing football. So this camp has been great for me. Hey, Elijah. Thank you. Hey, Elijah. Um, I think unless I'm mistaken, one of the, I guess, knocks on you was your speed coming out of Georgia. Um, but you don't look slow at all to me I mean you look pretty fast have you gotten faster and uh, worked on your speed you know these last couple of years to get to that point uh yeah I just continue with the training I normally I normally do um didn't really I don't really look into it but you know what other people say about me I'm, I've always known I wasn't very slow so uh just coming out here and just showing what I can do like I said just getting just camp has been a great opportunity just for me to show what I can do again Jeff and then Bo Uh, Elijah, how much have you worked with uh, Rich Scangarella, uh, the running backs that is, and in terms of what uh, he teaches from the Kyle, Handel, uh, Kyle Shanahan school of uh, running the ball and what we've seen from the 49ers over the last few years? Um, you know, more than anything, it's just it's, it's just the play actions, having great fakes and stuff like that. Uh, just trying to just trying to hone in on the little things, the little details that you know sometimes you don't think about. Sometimes you just think about running the ball and getting the ball and what you do with the ball. Um, I think it's really big on what you do without the ball, how you help the other players get open, how you can get them open, and certain things like that. Oh, and then Dave Zangaro. Elijah, I'm sure you might be a little tired of um, answering questions about your dad, but I'm curious how much the other guys in the locker room ask you about him. Uh, at, at first, a lot of them, but you know, after after a couple of weeks, it's just like it's just it's pretty much regular. But uh, that's how usually everybody is, and that's just uh, you know praises to my dad how popular he is. What's like? What's the most popular question that they ask? Uh, did you ever box? Everybody asks me that. <laughs> and did you? Uh, I did. I did for a little while, a uh, long time ago, though. Okay, thank you. Dave and then Martin. Hey, Elijah, you didn't really catch a lot of balls at Georgia. It seems like that's something that's 
obviously a big part of this offense and you've been doing a lot of camp. How do you feel in that respect and how hard have you worked on that? Uh, we're, we're very hard on it. Uh, you know, and uh, we do throw the ball to the back a lot, so it's something that you have to be able to do to be in this offense. So uh, it's just one of those things that if, if, if you can't do it, it's going to be hard for you to make it. So it's one of the things I really focused on this offseason. Martin and then Ed. Hey, Elijah. Um, you've been working a lot, obviously, on the first team, you know, these past couple, you know, this past week or so. What have you noticed about Carson – Specifically, and also, you know, with the other quarterbacks and in, in, in Jalen and Nate so far. Uh, you know, all of the all of those guys have helped me out a lot. Um, you know, when I didn't really know what to do, they you know they all helped me get lined up, and it's just how fast it moves and uh, everything like that. So they're they're all very feel comfortable with all of them, and all of them, you know, give me great advice and let me know what I got to do and I don't know. So I, I love all of them. Ed and then Zach. Elijah, I'm just curious. Uh, you have been getting a lot of opportunity in this camp. But what kind of feedback are you getting from the coaches, and and maybe Deuce in particular? Uh, you know, you know, one thing with them is is about us in general is, is trying to get better every day. So, uh, you know, if I have a good day, we just try to focus on the things that I, you know that I could work on and try to get better every day. So, uh, right now is not the time to be, you know, the time to relax. It's trying to get better every day. And, and if I could just follow up, how, how is this experience with the Eagles in camp compare? to the one you had last year uh, in Carolina? Uh, like I said, just more just more opportunities I've been able to get here. Um, you know, just, you know, working with, you know, working with different guys and uh, working with different teams, working, being able to work with the first team and stuff like that. I just didn't have those type of opportunities uh, in Carolina. We'll go Zach and then Jeff. Eliza, if I can ask about Miles Sanders, what is something about Miles that only a running back can appreciate, you know, that you have to play the position to really appreciate. Uh, I would definitely say how smooth, how smooth he is. Uh, a lot of the cuts he makes, he makes them look so easy. But uh, as a running back, you know that those cuts are not easy to make. Um, he makes a lot of stuff that you know that's hard for other people. Just makes it look real easy. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Elijah. If I, if I could follow up on what you were saying a little bit before about uh, about with the play action and some, doing some of the stuff away when you don't have the ball, what are, what are some of those things uh, specifically? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Just, just, you know, you know, ball fakes, you know, running your routes full speed, um, you know, running your routes at the right depth. Um, even if you're not getting the ball, you know what I'm saying? Knowing where you're supposed to be at all times, uh, pass protection, you know, you know, saying knowing when you should get out, when you shouldn't get out. So it's just stuff like that, you know, all the stuff that everybody else doesn't really pay attention to. That's, you know, that's watching the game.